Hey guys, it is good to see you tonight. I am currently in an Airbnb as I've been traveling for filming on location. It is good to see everybody tonight. We are going to be talking about a difficult and painful subject that people get very, very angry about. And I am going to guide you through this. We're going to have this discussion. Could be hard, but we're going to get through it together. Thank you for being here tonight. I already see hearts going up in the thing. Who is that? Who's in here already giving me those hearts? Clans, I should have known it was you. Thank you for being here tonight. We are going to talk probably for about a half an hour. We're going to talk about if men and women can be friends. This is going to be a hard talk. That's okay. People are going to get mad. That's okay, too. We're going to get through this together. Can men and women be friends? If you're going to get angry during this, that is totally okay. Drop it over there in the chat. We can talk about this. So can men and women be friends? Is it possible that there are two human beings on this earth, a man and a woman, who could possibly be friends with no super, super duper feelings? Yeah. On this planet, there is a woman and a man who could be friends on this planet somewhere. Hawk, good to see you under certain circumstances. I think that's what we're spiling in on. Kalanza, you say no friends. I hear that. Um, here's why I think you probably say that. And I, and I, I actually agree with both. Um, the conditions under which men and women could be friends is very narrow. Very narrow. Now, the research, here's what, here's what the research says. Uh, there's been a lot of research conducted on this. One of the most recent one is this. They took male and female friends out in public in settings. And they said, okay, guys, do you have feelings for each other? They asked him. And they both said, no, absolutely not. Both of them insisted. And then they took them apart and said, okay, we're going to ask you guys individual questions now. And they took them apart. And they said, we will not tell the other person anything. Please tell us the truth. And all the women said, no, absolutely not. I have no feelings for that person. I was completely honest. And the vast majority of the men, when they got alone and were told, no, we won't tell her anything. Can you please just tell us the truth? The vast majority of the men said, yeah, I do, secretly. Please don't tell her. Men have a hard time. Women sometimes. I don't think men and women can be friends very often, largely because of men. Now, something to think about. What kind of man is friends mostly with women, right? Mostly with women. Guys who are friends mostly with women are guys who have nice guy tendencies. They're guys who are insecure. There are guys who are afraid to be friends with other men, right? Male friendships. Men bond through vasopressin best, right? Solving stress together. We have direct communication skills, right? We tease, we push, we do all kinds of certain things together. And all of that leads up to bonding through sharing and through stress and achieving together, right? Male friendships. Not saying that women are not good people or, or, or good companions. Not saying that at all. But men, by and large, are designed to be friends with other men. The kind of men who prioritize relationships with women, not all of them, but most of them, is because they're too insecure to be around other men and be friends with other men instead. And a lot of women who have male friends, it's because there's something about him that makes him sexually unappealing. So he becomes down in status where she has to caretake his feelings and be gentle with him in some way. It's not good. It's not a good dynamic because then the guy is always waiting on the fringes, hoping. He becomes an orbiter. Sometimes women are manipulative and do this on purpose. Sometimes they have no idea it's happening, but he's doing it anyway. Sometimes he makes sabotaging remarks about her relationship. Sometimes he's waiting, waiting for her to break up with the other guy so that he can go and, and she'll realize how amazing he is. Is this always the case? No. Can a healthy men have relationships with women that are non-sexual and non-romantic. For the most part, here's the challenge, is when a man goes through a hard period and a woman is there and helps, that's vasopressin bonding. Now, when a man vasopressin bonds with a woman, it activates the pathway where he then wants to oxytocin bond with her as well to keep her around. Once they start building those vasopressin and oxytocin bonds, they get pretty close. 
And if he goes through a hardship with his romantic partner and happens to share that with that female friend, oftentimes this is how affairs, long-term affairs, start to happen. Men in marriages tend to have affairs when there's hard left turns in their life and they need support from someone and then they get it and then it transforms into a vasopressin oxytocin bond. Big, 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 big problem if you want to have long-term relationships. Now, can men and women maybe have friends if both of them are single and stay single? Maybe. It might be easier, at least to keep feelings under the surface or, or prevent them from blowing up into a fire. But then once you get into a marriage or, or a long-term committed relationship, now your partners have to not just trust you, but trust the other person. The man in your life, if you're a lady, has to have to trust the other man in your life. And that's difficult. The woman in your life, if you're a man, has to now trust the other woman in your life. It's very difficult. That, that competitiveness, very hard between those pieces. So it's extremely difficult to maintain a relationship. Now, all of that put together, very narrow, like Clanza, you said, very, 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 very narrow, exactly. Um... And Dan, like you're saying, just because you have feelings doesn't mean something has to happen. That's absolutely right. Having discipline of any kind is crucial in your life, at least, least among those just for having friendships. But can you have a friend that you are sexually or, you know, aroused toward and also have a long-term partner who maybe knows that you have that sexual arousal toward that friend? And can you all agree to be friends during difficult times? Put this another way. Rules and boundaries are not for when everything is perfect. And when people think about men and women being perfect, they think about perfect, perfect scenarios and where everybody is low stress and everybody is honest and everybody is in control of their emotions and everybody has discipline. And it is impossible to maintain perfect conditions. There was always going to come a day when somebody is going to be weak. Now, is it possible to get through that? It is. But again, exceedingly narrow. Now a question that's not asked very often. Do men and women need to be friends? Is there a point to men and women being friends? Some might say that we miss out. If I don't have friends of the opposite sex, I miss out. If, they, if, if everybody doesn't have friends of the opposite sex, they miss out. It's possible. That's an that's answer that some people could say. I would say we're meant to have extended family networks. We're not meant to be among complete and total strangers. Right. So if you need the opposite sex, you're supposed to have tons of members of the opposite sex around you. No, we don't. We don't right now. That'd be perfect scenario. That'd be natural scenario. Right. That's what we should have. We don't. Is it possible to build essentially then? Essentially what people are doing is building a pseudo family to replace the family they don't have. Can men and women build pseudo family relationships that are non-sexual while also having a long-term partner where everybody feels safe and secure and where during difficult times problems are not likely to arise. This is where the conversation really gets interesting because that's ultimately what people are doing and trying to do here. Elric, good to see you in here. Thank you. Thank you for being a member. You and, and Hawk, thank you guys for supporting this channel. I appreciate you guys. I think it's important to have a friend of the opposite sex. You gain great insight and context. And there we go, Elric. You, you, yeah, exactly. You nailed it right there. That's what a lot of people will say. Um, if you do not have an extended family like humans are meant to have, where you are surrounded by members of the opposite sex, then yes, I can understand that perspective. Things are lost if we don't have that. That's exactly what's happening here is people, people are using the word friend. Can I have a friend of the opposite sex? But what they're saying is, can I build 
a pseudo family to replace the extended family I don't have or the extended family that is denied to me by broken relationships and broken society. Can I build a, an extended family where I have sisters and cousins and brothers, whatever it might be, of the opposite sex? That's the question really here, isn't it? Hawk, you can't just be attracted to that person. That's the trick because that goes for the person as well. There has to be mutual non-attraction or as Dan has been saying, complete control over randomly attracted but refusing to become aroused by, right? And dwelling on lust. Very different. Very different. Very big difference. Now, can there be a, can there be a sort of biological response that you refuse to acknowledge or you refuse to, to tolerate? People might have different answers. Some people, Cleanza, not with me, I see that. Um, and I can respect and honor that. Some people will absolutely say no. Some people have been badly burned by family members or, or, or by, by, by friends, by, by non-friends, really. Some people have been badly burned. Other people, have different perspectives for different reasons. Some people have very good discipline and they can say, I can absolutely maintain this and I wouldn't tolerate X, Y, or Z from somebody else. Some people with secure outlooks, right? Some people with a secure attachment and a secure connection with other people can be fully honest, 100% on the table and absolutely realistic about things and say, absolutely, I can have these things because I would be honest and so would the other person. It's very possible. I'm curious what you guys think over in chat. What percent of men, throw me in chat, what percent of men do you think, it's not scientific or anything, just show me your percentage that you guys think. What percent of men, single men, could be friends with a single woman and not have secret romantic or sexual feelings for her. Completely asexual, completely platonic friendship for years. Throw me in chat and let me know what percent of men you, th you guys think are capable of that. Keep in mind, single man, some of them are going to be lonely. Some are secure. Some have friends. Some are not lonely. Some take care of themselves. Some don't. Some are desperate. Some are porn addicts. Some are you know, all kinds of things. What percent of men do you guys think could probably have a relationship with a, a, a platonic, 100% platonic relationship with women? I'd love to see over in chat. 3%, 1%, 100% of men, 50% of men, 0%. Only homosexual individuals, okay, 5%, 10%, less than 10%, 12%, okay, 5%, 30%, less than 10%. We're kind of all over the board. Most of you guys are below 10% or around or below 10%. 100% of males who spoke or friended me 100% when to cross over to boyfriend. And a lot of women have that experience. A lot of women have that experience. So I think the secure 50%, there you go, Dan. That's an interesting piece. Okay. I think the percentage really, I'm finding becoming conscious how much I've kept male friends knowing full well they're attracted to me. And that's, that's a piece of it, Super Betty. I'm glad you can be honest about that. Hats off to you. Respect to you. Your insights have taught me so much that I never learned from having almost no family. I totally feel you. Totally feel you. And a lot of women who have no family, they replace it with, with men in their life. And they tolerate all kinds of things from men because they don't want to be alone. A woman who's totally alone is a woman who is very much in danger in this world. Not just physically, but vulnerable. Women are not meant to be alone. Not that men are, but... You've completely fixed my relationships. Thank you, Evan. I'm glad to hear that. That's wonderful. What was the number one change that changed things most for you? I'd love to hear that. I'd love to see you guys getting better over in chat. Very good. I'm very proud of you guys doing all that work. If I if I can be proud. It's not really my work. It's it's you guys doing the work. 
That's wonderful. Okay, so you guys think that men have a fair, most of you think that men have an extremely low percentage of likelihood of being able to. Okay, chat, hit me with this, please. Now let's do the women. What percentage of modern women do you guys think are capable of having fully platonic relationships with men? Keeping in mind women who are secure, women who are insecure, women who are attracted to men, women who are not attracted to men, whatever it might be. What percentage do you guys think of women who are capable of having fully platonic, no romantic, no sexual feelings for years with men? Single women, single men, platonic friendship. 100%, Charlie? You're very, you're very optimistic about the human race. That's, I, I, I like that. So, I, you know, in some ways, that's a good thing. Don't lose that. Old man, 33%. Hawk, okay. 50%, 80%, 8%. Labot, interesting. Evan, 20%. Blessed, 100%. 50%. Dan, for the same reason, both secure. Okay. 95%. Most women, even married women, have wanted to float to danger. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Very low external validation, Valor. Interesting. From women's end, 80%, 80%, 80%. Women can have a roster of friends, no issues. They have the same but different problems when they hit an emotional low. They have elsewhere for validation. That can be, I've heard, a shoulder to ride on is a a pogo stick to ride on, right? A shoulder to cry on is a pogo stick to ride on, so to speak. I've heard that that phrase quite said quite a bit. Going with 50%, Elric, okay, gotcha. 20% 20% depends how attractive the man is. There you go, there you go, Tim. If he has money and status, I think very few women can resist. Okay. I think a factor is how frequently you interact daily, weekly, sparingly. Okay. Thinking about like, uh, what do they call them? Work husbands. Right. This is an actual term, work husband. This is my work husband. A lot of women with, with uh, extensive uh, full-time careers at an office job will often have what they call a work husband. Um, is it a funny joke? Maybe. Does it sometimes grow into full-time affairs? Absolutely. Quite often. Actually, the research shows. I'm friends with my ex. She had a kid with her new guy. Okay, Roxer. Interesting. Interesting. I would say 20%. Okay. So you guys are far, 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 far more optimistic about women being able to be friends with men than men being able to be friends with women. And the research backs this up. This is why women get so angry when I say it's exceedingly difficult and not impossible, but almost for men and women to maintain a long-term platonic friendship. Women get so angry because a lot of reasons. Sometimes they feel like I'm judging them. I'm telling them that they can't do it. I'm telling them the people in their life are lying to them. I'm making them feel like I'm taking people away from them. There's all kinds of reasons that women get very angry when you point out this absolute determined research. I don't think it's impossible. I know it's not. I know it's not impossible for men and women to have friendships. I know it's not. I think it is excessively difficult. And I think that the people who are that overwhelmingly invested in it often, often do so because they're replacing something in their life that they wish they had. Now, not always, not always. There's some amazing stories, for example, um, through history of priests and uh, female saints, for example, male and female saints being good friends, right? Very possible. Strict, rigid boundaries, right? Strict and rigid boundaries. I think that the boundaries must be so clearly defined that to Dan's point, people with secure attachment are probably the only ones who can realistically make a relationship like that work. And most of them won't. (laughs) Most of them won't. Most of them think it's too complicated. It's too risky. I can't trust other people that much. Or my partner is not going to be comfortable with it. Or their partner may not be comfortable with it. Because two people being friends, once you become married, it's four people all having to trust two people in the middle. Which is very difficult. Very difficult. 
depends on your culture. It depends on expectations. It depends on so many things. I think it's possible. I think it's very difficult. And I don't think most people have what it takes to make it work. Specifically, I don't think most men do. And I'm including the man in the friendship with the woman, but also the man who is now partnered with that woman on the other side. I don't think that that right there tends to work. I think that's darn near impossible for most people to navigate successfully. Unless all of them are friends together. And this is what I advise. If you are a single person who has a friend of the opposite sex and you get in a relationship with a consistent, secure, good person, introduce them and become mutual friends. That is the best thing I can recommend is become all friends together and not where your friend and your partner are begrudgingly friends and barely speak to each other but a real relationship between the two of them. They don't have to be best friends. They don't have to braid each other's hair and cry and, and you know hang out and paint each other's toes. And yes, I'm talking about the guys. They don't have to do that. But there should be a genuine respect and relationship between them so that your partner can trust them. That's what needs to happen. All right, similar to polyamorous relationships. There are some people who can do it, but very few. Most people claiming they're good at it with it are lying. A hundred percent, Elric. You're of the same mind as me there. You're of the same mind as me there. Is it possible? Yes. Can most people handle it? No. Are most people willing to do the work to make it work? No. Hey, Lukey, Luke, and Felix. Good to see you guys over there. But no, most people cannot tolerate this. Most people don't have what it takes. Most people are not willing to do the work. Most people are not willing to take it seriously enough to make this happen. And that's my answer. So if you're one of the few slim percentages of people who are capable of doing it, then you'd better make sure your partner is one of the few slim people capable of doing it and that your friend is one of the few slim people capable of doing it and that their potential partner is one of the few slim people capable of doing it. There has to be four people that all of this can line up perfectly for. And you guys here tonight in the chat present an interesting thing because the number of the odds of lining up four people who fully, completely believe that men and women can be fully platonic friends, as you guys see over in chat, it's very slim. You guys in chat can't even agree on this. So how are you going to line up four people perfectly in two different relationships to be able to do that? It's pretty hard. Not impossible, but pretty hard. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts. What are you thinking on this? Am I right? Am I wrong? Where are we at with this right now, you guys? I would love to hear from you guys on this over in chat. Here's what I'd really even like to hear. Dead right. Okay. Nearly impossible. There we go. Pretty damn right. Okay, there we go. I like that. I like that. All right. This is good stuff. See, this is the kind of conversation that we all need to be having. This is exactly the conversation that we all need to be having. Because this, this is what really matters right here, you guys. When we have these discussions, when we have these debates, this is what matters. Because we can be honest like this with each other. This, you guys, is the kind of discussion that actually is necessary to be able to have those discussions, to be able to have friends of the opposite sex. You have to be able to have this kind of discussion. And this is hard. Now, I'm going to turn on members-only chat here for another 10 minutes. Um, if you guys support the channel, thank you so much. I know that we have several members here in the house tonight. You're going to go members only chat. Members who are present, your names are in green. Hit me with questions that you have.
hit me with comments you have about this. I would love to hear that. Elric, I'm assuming that if the people in question had healthy attachment and understood and respect their own boundaries, a higher chance of success. Absolutely, Elric. In fact, if people have secure attachment and understand and respect their own boundaries and can talk about it, like we're talking about it tonight, I'm trying to model this for you guys. If you can have that, you can make most things work, which is fascinating. You can make most situations work, even non-traditional, non-normal situations. All kinds of things can work as long as you can be this honest. Because it's, it's, what's important isn't having things perfectly lined up to some weird arbitrary perfection necessarily. It's being able to be this honest and this clear and have these discussions. When you can do that, things get so much better. Elric and Hawk, I see both of you guys are members right now. What kind of comments do you guys have? Throw those in chat. Any questions you guys have, I'm going to hit you up. If anyone else wants to grab a membership, those are all available. Thank you for supporting the channel. I appreciate you. Yeah, one of those, I have to get rid of those healthy attachments. <laughs> I hear you, Elric. Well, you're in the right place. Building secure attachment is what makes it possible for you to have those relationships. And not just, okay, I'm going to have a friend of the opposite sex. Having secure attachment makes you able to build relationships where you can have hard talks. Hey, babe, we aren't doing it enough every week. I really could need more, could use more, but I want you to enjoy that. I want to just, you know, close your eyes and think of England, right? Let's have an experience together that we both enjoy. How can we do that? I was a licensed marriage and family therapist for many years. And I remember one couple coming in and they said, Adam, for the last 10 years, we have only been physically intimate once per year. 10 years, once a year. And they finally came to see me. And I said, and I looked at the wife and I said, well, I looked at the guy first. And I said, do you not want it more than once a year? He said, I do. And I looked at the wife and I said, do you not want it more than once a year? And she said, I do. And I said, okay, well, and I looked at her and I said, how often is he asking? And she said, once a year. <laughs> thank you, Cappy Girl. And thank you, Dan, for becoming members. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for supporting the channel. That is so kind of you. Thank you. That is wonderful. I appreciate you guys. Welcome to Members Only Chat. Uh, Hawk, how is it possible to do it once a year for 10 years? Because they both settled for it and they weren't willing to have the conversation, but they couldn't even have a conversation about ending it. They couldn't have any conversations. They were just resentful and confused. So I dragged them in and said, you're going to start asking and here's how you're going to do it. And then all of a sudden it started increasing. And then it was, can we do it more often? Well, yes, but here's what I would need. Great. Let's do that. And then they just did it and it worked. Then they went up to once a month. Then twice a month, then once a week, then two times a week, then a little bit more than that. Happy girls are relationship therapists. What do you think about people that say friends with a lot of their exes, even being in committed relationships? I think that it's a recipe for disaster quite often. Um, I think that it's people who have very, very poor relationships typically, and they're craving connections. Not always, but it's usually people keeping a lot of options or they don't know how to maintain healthy relationships so they can't let go of any bond they create because they think relationships just happen to them and they can't let go of that person again not everybody but often hawk i was miserable at the end of my marriage when it ended up just being that once a year that's it that's it hawk and so many people who end up in that are there because they can't have the conversations sometimes both can't sometimes one can't sometimes one won't um, but often they have no idea what the other person needs or wants. So they settle for it. It's horrible to see. Horrible and fixable. Eric, I have a friend who's a female and I see her as a friend, but there is an important aspect to it. She's significantly younger than I am. Okay. Sounds weird, but we're both students. We're at school. I get you. 100% get you. So that's there's differences, right? Different dynamics. 100% um, difference there. It, it, it does make a difference. If you can see people in different categories, different groups, different boundaries, different structures, all kinds of things can impact this. 100%. I agree. Bad ideas staying close to exes unless kids are involved. If kids are involved, 100%. Um, just keep in mind, if you're friends with your ex, your new partner needs to be okay with that. And that can be tough. It can be really tough. The boundaries 
are easy to blur. Dan, isn't the idea of having secure attachment based on the idea we can operate with everyone in good faith? Often under perfect circumstances. Now, remember the secure people still get stressed out. They still get drunk. They still have fights. They still, you know, sometimes they're not rational. Sometimes they make stupid decisions. You can be secure and stupid at times. It still happens. Um, we must plan for the worst occasions, not live by them, not live as if that's all there is, but we have to plan for the worst occasions. And that sometimes means building in rules. Sometimes it means building in boundaries. And that will look different for every couple. That will look different for every couple. And regardless of what you think of, of him politically, there uh, years back, Mike Pence made a huge splash in the media because he and his wife won't go out to dinner alone or in a hotel room alone with a member of the opposite sex. They, they just won't. Um, if he's going to, if they're going to go to dinner with somebody, it's going to be, I uh, think they're together, which is interesting. And the media picked this up and ran with it like he was a freak. That's the arrangement they have in their marriage that makes the most sense to them. Other couples will say that's weird and stupid. And you don't have to do that. People have their own boundaries. Every couple needs to agree on that and have the conversations. Cappy girl, my married friends who have been married a long time seem to only be friends with other couples, but don't typically have opposite sex friends. That's how most married people tend to tend to level out because they're protecting the marriage itself and they're protecting it during weak times that could come that they can't predict and they're protecting feelings and they're protecting from doubts and the marriage itself is more important to them than a potential friendship with somebody. They can just go out and have a friend of the, of the same sex for them. To them, it's not such a big deal. Um, other people it is. Uh, Keanu will do fake arm hugs around people and taking pictures and not just a Pence thing. I have learned that from Keanu. So the other day I had to um, take pictures with a couple of women as my own thing. And I remember I did, I did full hover hand on both of them. And the camera guy afterward, he laughed and he was like, I saw what you did. And I was like, of course, I said, I learned it from Keanu. He's the master of hover hand. Um, but it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. If that's the case, shouldn't we be able to be friends with the opposite sex as long as we operate in good faith? Why not? I'm not going to come to your house and hit you with a baseball bat if you do. Your partner's going to have to be comfortable with it. Their partner's going to have to be comfortable with it. You guys just do whatever you want. People are free to do whatever they want, whether it's healthy or not. People do anything they want. That's, oh, that's part of the foundation of America, number one. But people can do whatever they want, but it depends what your long-term goal is right? If a married couple wants to prioritize their marriage above all things and minimize risks, they may agree to this boundary. That may be something they agree to if they both agree to it. Dan, would you marry somebody who said, absolutely not. You are never allowed to be friends with the opposite sex ever. Or I will take a bat to your face. I don't think you would marry that person, right? This would be, this should be, if you were to get married, this should be a conversation you have well before marriage at the beginning of your relationship, even. You guys would have to agree on that. And so would the other friend and, and their partner. And those are conversations that need to be had. But as you've seen in chat, it can be hard to line up four people who all agree on that. Very difficult. Elric, my great uncle wouldn't even sit in a booth next to a woman that wasn't my great aunt. He felt it was improper and a slight to her to do so. I can respect that. Not that I think every man has to do that, but I can respect that because that's him prioritizing the relationship and, and his respect for her. Great. That's fantastic. I don't think any woman should feel slighted that he wouldn't sit next to her. She should say, well, that's really honorable that you respect your wife that much. Thank you for doing that. I hope I have a husband who respects me that much, even if I don't need that particular boundary. And at the same time, there's guys who would not care about that because they say it's only sharing booth. It means nothing at all. And I have no desire whatsoever. It's not, I'm not having sex in the booth with you. Right. Totally different, different perspectives, different requirements, different everything. So at the end of the day, we all need to define what is important to us and acceptable to us. We all need to be very clear about that with our friends. And we all need to be very clear about that with our partners. And we need to build the kind of connections with people that we are able to build and maintain and that they're able to build and maintain. And all of that requires more secure attachment, obviously. So absolutely mandatory for a good quality life where you are able to build what you want to 
and have a fulfilling life and the relationships you want to be able to do that. So thank you, you guys, for being here for this tonight. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for trusting me to guide you through this conversation. Thank you, chat, for having such great insights on this. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you to my supporters, new supporters, and my Risa and my current supporters. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. I plan to come back tomorrow night, same time. Uh, what time is it? I'm on a different time zone. 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. I'm over on Pacific Time right now filming. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I'll be back tomorrow night. This is recorded. It's, it's on the channel if you want to watch it. Anyone wants to send me some, some rage comments, you are welcome to do so, of course. But uh, at the end of the day, build the relationships that are right to you and make sure you and the other person has the skills to back up those relationships. Absolutely important that you do that. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being honorable and respectful. And I'll see you tomorrow night.